Now that we've gone over the basics of volumetrics, we'll have an introduction to the Excel volumetric calculator, followed by a demonstration on how to do an oil and gas volumetric assessment. This workbook is designed to be an aid for calculating reservoir hydrocarbons in the subsurface. A couple of things to note before we get an overview of the workbook and do some sample calculations. First off, I have standards in any of the calculations where yellow are input fields, gray are calculated, and this orangish yellow color are drop downs. I often include screenshots for helpful tips and give the references or links to them. There are 11 worksheets in this workbook. I strongly suggest that the first one you look at is the README, which we're in now. Also, they tend to be a little bit long, so sometimes you'll want to make sure you scroll to the right, left, and down to make sure that you see everything. I won't read you the README work sheet at this time because we're going to go through them very quickly here anyways. So the volumetric calculator is here. This is where you'll do your calculations for a deterministic volumetric assessment. Here is where you can do a parametric analysis and we'll do an example in here as well. One of the things you'll have to calculate is the B sub G sub I, or the formation volume factor for gas. Here is an aid for doing this. Here is the formula and the calculator for doing adsorbed gas. This is for the shale gas assessment plays. Just as a reference, and maybe an aid, here is what the IEA assessment form looks like. Here are some examples and here is a calculator to help you work through it. I've talked about the shapes method for estimating volumes. Here are some sc helpful screenshots and examples. I strongly suggest that you look at this article by James et al. 2013 who goes into these much more rigorously. a worksheet to kind of demonstrate how we do the graphic and the DAT method for doing volumetrics. Here is a reference for maturity so we can see the LOM or the RO and the types of commodities that you might generate. Here are fluid properties. These kind of tell you again maturity and the commodities, temperatures associated with it, and the GORs, API color, C7 plus and B sub O for different types of commodities. Again, here are some compositional uh, information on the different commodities. Also, here is another uh, example. And lastly, this is a compendium or a compilation of different references I found on recovery efficiency. So if you need to know what the recovery efficiencies are for the reservoirs you're including, you may want to look through this page and consult some of these references. Let's take a closer look at Worksheet 2, the volumetric calculator. Let's get the overview first. There's a spot up here where you can input some information about the prospect name, the assessor, and the date that you're doing the work. Again, I've reprinted this legend here for inputs are in yellow, calculated cells are in gray, and drop downs are in orange. Here's where you can put your inputs in for the assessment. I've put some aids in here to help you calculate the, the B sub O sub I, and here's some hints on what GORs would look like for different commodities. And here are some different recovery efficiencies for gas and oil and if you're doing a shale oil these are suggested recovery efficiencies from the IEA. In this example I put one as the recovery efficiency that just said when you do that that's basically your in place volume you're assuming everything is being recovered. 
So down here are your outputs for your oil assessment. And since right now it's doing a gas assessment, it, it returns these pound value exclamation point. And here are outputs for your condensate and gas assessments. Again, you have some B sub G uh, calculators in here and a hint on how to do the shale gas recovery efficiency. Off to the right, I've reproduced this uh, wiki page from AAPG on the formulas for doing the volumetrics. And here are some example calculations that we're going to work through. So I took these out of the literature so that I could get a, a, a good idea or a validation of the calculator. So OK, let's work through that oil example. So I copied it. I'm just going to paste it here. I'll make it a little bigger to read. And we're going to use, put in the inputs. So we have 10,000 acres. We have a thickness, a net thickness here. So it's, it's, it's your net to gross times your thickness. Here I've only made it so you can input only net thickness. So we're going to put in here 100. Phi is our porosity. So that's going to be 0.2. Our hydrocarbon saturation is 0.75. And here we have a gray cell for our B sub O, our formation volume factor. I have a calculator here. So if it were 200, the GOR would be 1.5. And this just calculates what's over in here. So you'll have to set your, your GOR here. So it turns out that 500 is 1.3. Our conversion is to acre feet from barrels and our recovery efficiency I set to one here when you set this to one it does an estimate of the in place volume and when you do that you should look in your outputs here for oil and see the values but it says here pound value it's, it's an error and the reason is is that every time you do this you need to set your commodity. So if you click on the cell and you see the little drop down arrow, you click on that and we're gonna this is a black oil and now it's calculated. Now that we've set the commodity to black oil, let's take a look at the outputs. It gives you the original oil in place in acre feet and then it gives you the original oil place in reservoir barrels, meaning that we have not applied the B sub O sub I, or the formation volume factor for oil. So these are the actual volume of the fluids in the reservoir, in the subsurface. When we get to oil recovery, this is an acre feet. This is after we've applied the B sub O sub I and the recovery efficiency. And since recovery efficiency is set to one, that's an in-place volume. Here it is in barrels. So we've used the conversion of the 7758. Then I give it in millions of barrels, which is 895.15, which matches what we did by hand in calculating this. And it also gives you the solution gas uh, in standard cubic feet, in thousands of standard cubic feet. And that's based on the GOR of the oil that you have over here. So you need to put this GOR in to do this calculation. OK, let's do our gas calculation here. So I've copied and pasted here our, our information for the gas analysis or assessment. It says our area is 50, 56 acres. Our net reservoir is 34 feet. Our fee is going to be, or our effective porosity is 0.15. Our hydrocarbon saturation is 0.8. We won't use this, the B sub O sub I in here, so just leave it. 
The constant here is different for gas than it is for oil. So the oil constant is 7758, and we'll need that for doing the liquids. And we'll come down below and we'll put it, we'll look at the gas constant. And the recovery efficiency we'll leave at 1. So we'll do an in place volumetric analysis. So if we scroll down and we look here, uh, let's first off we'll see if these are all this error messages. And the reason is, is that we need to change this to a gas calculation. So we'll put this as gas. Now you see these all change to the error message because we're not doing an oil calculation, so our oil pets are off. And here we're seeing the gas. So let's take a look at this equation very briefly. It's one thing I want to show you here. And if we look up here, we see that here is our gas constant. So it's 43,560 divided by the number of cubic feet in a barrel. So that's what's going on there. So the constant is different for gas. And we make sure our B sub G is going to be 0 0.000739. That's already in there for you. And we've input an LGR. So it's 55. This is a liquid to gas ratio for a gas. So it should be something less than 67. So I put that in here. Here we put in the recovery efficiency for gas at 1. So again, it's in place. And it will calculate your recoverable in billion cubic feet of gas and the oil equivalent uh, barrel. So here we just divided by 6. So it's 36 million oil equivalent barrels. And by using the LGR, we're basically multiplying by that and factoring in the change in units for thousands. And so we have here, it says here, we have 11.9 million barrels of condensate. So here it says, we had 216.55 billion cubic feet of gas, which matches up with what our example shows. Let's take a closer look at this B sub G. So normally, uh, an engineer will give you this value, and it was given to us for this exercise. But you may find that you need to recalculate this yourself. I've put in here a B sub G sub I calculator, worksheet 3. It's based off uh, the compressibility of gas and uses a workflow technique from Standing and Katz, 1941. I put in here, here's a, a model composition and calculation from Katz that you can always test against. And I've also included some information here from the PetroWiki page about doing this. And I'll let you read through this and uh, as well as a wiki page definition of pseudo reduced pressure and temperature which is something you're going to need to use to do this calculation but it's calculated out for you the workflow is you enter the reservoir pressure and the reservoir temperature and then it recalculates the reservoir temperature in degrees Rankine you're going to need to figure out what the Z is so that's the compressibility in the uh, gas law. You need to enter, to do this, you just need to enter a composition for your gas. And here I'm basically using a condensate composition that I copied. These are just model compositions for different commodities. But this will vary by well or field. You can look through and find one that you want to use. Uh, I've given you a little work area here because you may need to recalculate out these uh, compositions. Not all reports give the same compositional components. So that's where you can do a little bit of work here. And once you do this inputs, it will give you calculate out here the gas gravity for you, the gas density. It'll tell you the uh, pseudo reduced pressure, the pseudo reduced temperature and the gas density. So it gives that for you. 
So then there's this nomogram here. And here you, you put in the pseudo reduced pressure, which says 6.604. So you just grab this red line and move it. That's 5, 6, 6.6 6 gets you right there. And it says you want a pseudo reduced temperature of 1.667. Let's zoom in a little bit on this. And so we're looking here for 1.6, 1.7. So if we come over here, so now it's crossing 1.6. So 1.667 is a little bit over halfway. And if we come over to the left on the axis, we can read the compressibility factor, which says it's about 0.091234, oh, about 0.952. So we'll scroll back up and we'll input 0.952 and it calculates your B sub G at 0.00734. So that's how you can get to the B sub G. Let's go back to the volumetric calculator and you can see that's pretty close to what we used here.